This digital VTX and camera by HD Zero changes digital FPV because it works on 1S whoops and nanos without weighing a ton. It's the HD Zero Whoop Lite VTX and the Nano Lite camera. This is a huge deal for our tiniest drones, but it's also great for racing builds. When I was getting it to work, there are a few little quirks, so I'm going to share with how to avoid them, as well as this video, we're going to cover the unboxing of the VTX and camera, their specs, installation, day, indoor, and night flight test. The Whoop Lite VTX and Nanolite camera come either individually or in a bundle, which includes the VTX, the camera, 40mm MIPI cable, dipole antenna and wires, all for a touch under $100. The camera is $50 and the VTX is $55 if bought individually. The VTX can be powered by 5 volts and includes a heatsink, so if you're installing it on a Whoop or Nano, you should remove them to save the extra weight. But for other builds, you should certainly keep it on. There is a special Nano update cable included, as well as an adapter board to use the existing update cable that you already have. Input power ranges from 2.9 volts to 5 volt, so it is going to work on most 5 volt pads or VBAT from a 1S battery. Output power is either 25 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts, and it has smart audio, which is cool if you use ExpressLRS backpack. The camera has the same sensor as the normal Nano camera, and it looks like the lens is from the Runcam Nano 3. It's switchable between 4 to 3 and 16 to 9 aspect ratio with a giant 84 degree field of view. Carl has said the HD Zero Nano camera will continue to be sold because the bigger lens has a more broader application. Installing on a 3 to 6S all in one wasn't a problem as wiring it up to a 5 volt pad like an analog VTX is a breeze. On the 1 to 2S all in ones, this is where I found difficulty for two reasons. First is 1 to 2S all in ones don't supply enough amperage through the 5 volt pad and the VTX shuts off after a few seconds. If you're going to do a 1S build, I'd recommend going directly to VBAT. The second is all in ones on 1 to 2S whoops don't usually include a spare UART, which means you can't get OSD because you're going to need that MS. SP connection. I ended up buying a new Mobula 7 1S Express LRS edition because while it has that onboard VTX, it does include an extra UART and smart audio pin. Plus, by desoldering the two bridge pads, you can disable the onboard VTX. Jhemku have a 1S all in one that has more UARTs than you need. I'd recommend building instead of converting an existing whoop or waiting until manufacturers come out with them natively. After installing it, it was time to update the firmware, and because of its size, the nano update cable needs to be connected to the adapter board to work on the VRX. After my build was complete, this is what I ended up with, which was pretty clean and decent. And it's cool to have a digital whoop in such a little package. Flying around outside was a lot of fun because of the HD Zero video. I found hitting all the small gaps that only a whoop could hit a lot easier. And it's amazing at just how much more you can do with a high definition video feed. I wouldn't have had the confidence to do any of that on analog. The camera quality was good enough for a whoop considering you don't exactly get the best quality lenses on whoops anyway. Indoor flights were pretty good as well and I was really impressed at the image quality and this is just me ripping around my apartment while my fiance was out. Let's keep this between you and me because last time I chopped one of the leaves from her favourite plant in a crash. Flying around at night I was happy enough with the video quality knowing it's not a dedicated starlight camera. Even though it seemed the field of view on the lens blew out the lights but it was still really fun to rip a whoop in the city where you couldn't fly any other drone because of the noise as well as the weight. I'm really impressed by the HD Zero Whoop Lite VTX as well as the Nano Lite camera and I have to say that I can't wait to be adding more of these into the different builds on my fleet. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.